Well, welcome back to the channel. I've got my greasy work shirt on today. Today we're going to remove the hub on my new Northern Tool motorcycle trailer. And I'm actually going to replace the bearings with what I hope is a better set of bearings and repack the bearings with grease. So if you've never done that before, hopefully this video will help. And the tools that you need are really very simple. You need a hammer, a punch, a pair of wire pliers, some gloves, a roll of paper towels, and of course some grease, and we'll talk about that later. And these tools I carry with me in my trailer uh, with my motorcycle anytime I'm traveling. I have a little box made out of plywood. You need something sturdy for a little toolbox in your trailer because it does bounce around. So I made this out of plywood and I keep my tools in there and it doesn't come apart. And I also have spare grease and extra bearing. So if I have bearing problems when I'm out on a trip somewhere, I can change the bearing right on the side of the road. The first thing we want to do is to take the outside cap off and I don't like to beat that up. And I always have at least a flat screwdriver. So just go under the, the lip a little bit and pry that off. Should not be difficult to get off, but don't beat it up. Place that to the side. Next, there will be a cotter pin that you will need to bend back in alignment somehow. And then we will pull that out. And I find it helps to just put one needle of your needle nose pliers in there and either just pry it out or tap it out with a hammer. No, that's tight. That's tighter than I like it. That's what these are for. Just take that, that and remove the nut. And I like to have a paper towel to lay my stuff on to keep it as clean as possible. And the most important thing with doing these bearings is there will be a washer between the nut and the bearing. You do not want to forget that when you put the thing back together. Always want to have that washer between the nut and the bearing. And voila. So there's an outer bearing. Oh man, there is not much grease at all. They are, they do have grease, but not much at all. And they actually have a number on them. 30205P6. And these may be fine bearings, but I, when I bought my trailer five years ago, everyone recommended updating the bearings. So I found a company that has bearings that seem to be an upgrade and they've worked fine for me and they're not that expensive. So I always uh, repl I replace the bearings on the Harbor Freight and I'm going to do it here also. So now the only other thing to do, this is the outer bearing. There's an inner bearing that's behind the grease seal. And you've got to take the grease seal out. And usually taking it out is going to destroy the seal. You have to kind of pry it out. Uh, but the bearing kit that I've got comes with a new grease seal. So one, uh, you can take a screwdriver or just a pair of pliers, anything uh, to get under the lip of the seal and pry it out. And it shouldn't be that hard to get out. There we go. And you can see I kind of destroyed the seal. And then the inner bearing comes out. In this case, they are both the same bearing. The inner and outer are both a 30205. So we got the bearings out and they're both the same size. Okay, the next step now is the new bearings will come with a, what's called, I call it a race. I don't know what's called, it's a ring that the roller bearing uh, runs in. Now, if you're just repacking these uh, and, and keeping the bearing, I always like to keep the outer bearing and the inner bearing separate and make sure I put the outer bearing back on the outer race and the inner bearing back behind the seal. Uh, just because they've already worn to kind of match one another. So that's what I like to do. And this is not a huge hub, so it's not that hard to get the races out. That's what the punch is for. So you take a punch and you can see down in here, uh, there's a, a lip. I don't know if you can see, there's a lip that the punch will catch on. And you just punch it lightly and kind of go around. Don't try to punch it, remove it all with one whack. Rotate it and kind of bring it out evenly. And it's kind of snug, but it should not be hard to get out. Okay, at some point, it'll come out flush with the hub. Uh, so you'll need to... What do I normally do? I put it on something. Okay, in this case, this is where my toolbox comes in handy. Because I can just use the edge of the toolbox here. Kind of a jury rig thing. Hold it with one hand and 
keep whacking and rotate it. And voila, the race is out. Let's do the other side now. All right, the other race. So after getting the races out, you will want to clean the old grease out of the hub, off the axle, and your castle nut and washer. Make sure all those are clean and set them aside. Then break out the new bearings. You will want to make sure that you have a new grease seal that goes on the back. And this kit comes with another cap, but I'm going to reuse the cap that, that came with it. And check to make sure that your bearings are correct. These are 302. 05 just like the other other bearings and these also say yeah the old bearings didn't say this but the new bearings say 25 millimeter so the next step that i'm going to do is put the two races in and you will need one more tool that i did not mention you'll need a a driver a bearing and sealed driver and that is to drive the races back into the hub and i carry this with me on the motorcycle it actually comes out of a kit and these are cheap this is a kit, uh, you know, the handle was in here and this uh, driver was in there, that one there. These are all millimeter. This is a 50 millimeter race and seal driver. I don't carry this, I just carry the handle and the one that I need with me. So again, you just need a firm surface. And here's my bearings. You don't need the bearing yet. We'll have to pack the bearing in a minute, but this is the front bearing. That's what I'm going to call it, so I'm going to put that on the left side. And be sure and put the seal in correctly. And when you drove the old race out, you may have scarred the hub just a little bit, but I usually don't have a problem with that. And what we want to do is drive this race down until it butts up against that shelf or edge or shoulder, whatever you want to call it there. And the, one of the hardest parts is getting this thing started in straight. And that's where a brass hammer is good because you're not going to scar anything with a brass hammer. And just kind of go around and tap, 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 until you know it's going in straight, until you got it started. And you can go around and around and around until you get flush with the outside of the hub. And then you can't go any further with the hammer. But that's where the driver comes into play. Yeah, I turn it over. I don't know what you call that, but you turn it over like that. And it keeps it centered in the race. So then you just put that in the race and then just start hammering the heck out of it. And you tell by the change of sound that you've got it down and look inside and make sure it's down all the way around against the, uh, the inner edge. All right, you're done with that one. Now do the, the rear, same way. I just did the rear, here's the front. Same thing, get it started with the hammer gently just tap 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 around and around a little bit at a time a little bit at a time just keep going around and around and around then take the driver hear the change in sound it's down but check it anyway yep looks good now comes the fun part we've got to pack the wheel bearing and you can buy a uh, pack your a, a tool to pack these things with grease, but I've never had much luck with that tool. So I just do it the way my daddy taught me years ago. And I like to use gloves for this. Put some in the palm of your hand. And what you want is the grease to squish out between each roller and actually come out the back side. And the way to do that, take the side that's got the more open, you see there, you don't want that side. You want the side that's got more space between this outer, whatever that thing is called. Uh, that keeps the bearings in line. And you want to force grease up in there. And the way you do that is just the palm of your hand and just try to keep squishing it up in there. And eventually you'll see it come out the top. I think you can see it there. There's three or four bearings that the grease has come squished up between. So just keep going around. You want to do that all around the bearing. This is pretty important. Okay, keep going, and again. And again. 
I just like to roll it good. You're going to roll it anyway as you're putting the tire on, but I like to roll it and really make sure I've got this thing covered in grease. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, again, clean paper towel. Now I'm going to do the other one. Same technique. Now you do this the same way whether you're starting with new clean bearings or you're just inspecting the bearings. I do mine every year. I, I take them apart and inspect the bearings and clean them. And I usually clean them first with paper towels to get the bulk of it off. And I just use a brake cleaner, clean the bearings. And, and they say definitely don't spin it with an air compressor. It's, it's easy if, when you're cleaning these to take an air gun and spin them. It's fun. Slings the brake cleaner off, but I've read that, that you really don't want to do that because there's no lubrication and you can actually spin them very fast and do damage to them. So we got two packed wheel bearings now. Now I like to take my gloves back off so I don't make a mess on all my tools. And I keep a box to throw this stuff in over here. Throw my garbage. Now, the most important thing, and I've done this a time or two, is you want to do the rear bearing first. And the key is the seal has to go on after the bearing. And a couple of times I put the seal on before putting in the bearing. And then you usually tear up the seal trying to get it back out. And then you got to go somewhere and get another seal. So pay attention. Get your rear bearing. Drop it in. This is the rear because the studs are on the other side. And take your seal. And there's an obvious inside and outside. Usually there's a, this is the outside. This is the inside. And usually there's a spring that goes around the lip that put a little pressure on it. So it seals tight around the axle. So this is the outside and you can just drive that in with a hammer, but be very careful that you don't overdrive it. If you overdrive it, it may rub the bearing and then you're going to have trouble. So tap a little bit at a time, just like we did with the race around, around, around a little bit at a time. You do not want to get it cocked and go too far on one side and then feel, and then feel like you've overdone it and worry about it and do like me half a dozen times rip it out and have to go get another seal because you're afraid it's too deep and it will rub the bearing you don't want that so take it slow and it should be pretty much just flush with the outer edge of the hub yep uh, maybe one more tap right there don't go too deep take your time I think that's good. Okay, then slide the hub. Be careful. Don't mess up the seal with the with the threads. Be slow and gentle. Don't bump it. Just slide it on. Some people say put a little bit of grease around the axle where the seal is going to rub. I don't know if that matters or not. Some folks like to do that. So go back, back. All right. Then we put the outer bearing in. So, and remember, washer, make a point that you remember that you did in fact put the washer on because I put this together, put the cap on, and then wonder did I really put the washer on and take it back apart and check it because I can't remember, but say, yep, I put the washer on. And here's the castle nut. And here's the part that scares everyone and scared me for many years is how tight do you make that nut? And we've had a couple of RVs, three or four total RVs, travel trailer, a couple of fifth wheels, and I've always maintained the bearings on those. And uh, Dexter is the manufacturer. And I like their technique that they said to use one time. And I'll show you. Make sure your tools are clean. You don't want dirt in your grease. So make sure your pliers are clean. And I just take these. And pretty much they said 50 foot pounds. But I just do it until it's good and tight. But you want to tighten it until it's pretty snug. Because you've just put in new races. So you want to make sure that they are are set and then I back up until it's loose and you spin it with your finger and then Dexter says just finger tight and if you can't get quite get to the hole to put the cotter key in back off one notch put the cotter key in and that's what I've always done and I have had had no trouble with that and then it's just a matter of putting the cap back on and you're done and of course you've got to be in the cotter key and you want to do both sides and that's where needle nose pliers come in handy. Grab one side with your pliers 
and bend it. You want to bend it enough that it doesn't rub the cap. So you want to kind of wrap it around the nut, do both sides. And like I said, bend it because that cap is going to go in here. So and you don't want it rubbing the cap because the cap will be spinning. This will not be spinning, but the cap will be spinning with the hub. And you don't want rubbing this. So just uh, keep messing with it until you're happy. <coughs> you got it. And I think that is good. Now, some folks will say that's enough grease, but, and the, so there's a big debate on whether you fill the hub with grease or not. I like to fill it with grease, so I won't bore you with that, but I'm gonna take my grease gun. There's a grease fitting, a grease zerk on the back, and I'm gonna pump that with my grease gun until I see grease start to come around, out around the outer bearing. Put the cap on, and we are done. One last thing, I always carry an old ratchet and socket with me. This is a 21 millimeter and I always keep that in the trailer with me. Also, to change a tire on the road or to be able to remove the tire to repair a wheel bearing if I need to. So you can see it's not that big a deal if you have a breakdown on the road. I carry a spare tire. I carry a, a repair kit, a tubeless repair kit and an air compressor. So what else is gonna go wrong on the road with the trailer other than the wheel bearing? And like I said, I carry a spare bearing, two bearings, inner and outer, which are the same, seal, little tub of grease, taped up tight so it can't get contaminated. And the tools that you see, I only use the tools when I do this, I use the tools that I carry on the bike. So I make sure that I have what I need to do this. So uh, that's just the way I do it. And standard disclaimer, I'm not a professional. I have no certifications and just what I've read, what my dad taught me and what I've learned over the years. But so all I can say is it's worked for me. So hopefully this video has been helpful. And if you're kind of on the edge about whether you want to do this or not, hopefully I've made it seem like it's really not that big a deal. Just take your time and uh, you can do it. I have the right tools. You got to have the, you know, the hammer, the punch, uh, the pliers for the big castle nut, and the main thing is this 50 millimeter race driver tool uh, that you can use to drive the race in. It's, you can drive the race in with a punch, but you run the risk of scarring the race uh, with the punch. This is aluminum, and so no matter what you do, you're not going to scar the race because it's hardened steel, and it will just scratch this instead of scratching the race. So this is probably the most important thing that you need to have. But these are cheap. Get them from Amazon, parts store. I don't know what I pay for this thing, but probably one of those, like everything's 1995 in, in this kind of a, with these tools, but most important thing. And I carry that with me. And with that, you may be broken down, but you're not stuck. You can always repair it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.